You're listening to Embrace Your Snake, the number one podcast for musicians, creatives, and entrepreneurs who have big ideas and need just a little bit of help to get them out into the world. I'm your host, Michael Jackson, and today we're going to talk about habits. How do they form? How do you keep them or get rid of them? And is it necessary? Let's talk about it. I was talking with one of my friends today. Actually, I've been talking to several people over the past several days about the things that we do on a daily basis. We get up, we might watch our um, news on TV, we might turn on Facebook, we might brush our teeth, we might uh, go eat breakfast, then we get ready for work, and we put on our clothes, and we also put on our you know, underwear first, then we put on our left sock, and then the right sock, and all these things we do, um, and they're habits. They're unconscious habits most of the time, and they form our lives. And what I have learned myself and from watching others is that these habits either drive us forward or they hold us back. And for most people, the habits that we have formed hold us back. The the relationships that we form are the same as habits, and those can also hold us back. But let's talk about, about these in more detail. First of all, we all know that the habits come from, they are things that we repeat over and over in our lives, and they become easy. And some of those habits are are really, really good. For example, when you're driving, it's a habit to look in the mirror and check to see if anything's behind you before you switch lanes. That just is, you don't have to think about it. You get in the car, You when you back up, you know you look up, you look in the mirror, and there's nothing behind you. When you switch lanes, you automatically push that signal either up or down to move left or right. It's a habit. You don't have to think about it. If you had to think about it every time, driving would be a very dangerous activity for most of the people in the world. The same thing happens when we go to work. We have habits that we do. For people that work in offices, you know that you're going to walk in and you're going to say, Hey, Gina. Hey, Rob. How are you doing? Good morning. It's a habit. They're they're there. You already know they're going to get there before you. You're going to say hello. You might get there before them. You're going to start working. They'll come in. They'll say hello. It is a habit. Is it a courtesy? Yes, it's a courtesy also, but it's a habit we formed so that we all get along in the society. Our habit of checking our email in the morning keeps us maybe up to date on what's going on with our day. But let's talk about that one little habit right there. Just getting up in the first thing in the morning, checking our email, checking our Facebook, checking our Twitter. That little habit right there sets the foundation of our day. Because a lot of those emails that we get, a lot of those Facebook posts that we see automatically put us in a state of mind of this is happening in the world or that is happening in the world. And it affects how you're going to go about your day. If the first thing you do in the morning is get up and you see an email from your boss that says, hey, don't forget to give me that report this morning as soon as you get in the door, that sets your frame of mind for the day. That automatically says, oh, my day is going to be this way or that way, and I've got to get up and do this for my boss. I'm not doing anything for myself. I'm doing this thing for my boss. I also think that these habits, um, the ones like that, where it's your boss telling you to do something, where you're getting Facebook news that says the world is about to explode and the aliens are taking over and the viruses are going to eat our minds and our bodies, are also things that put us in a frame of mind that stop us from doing whatever we want to do and need to do to move forward. Some of the things that I do believe would be good habits might be meditation, getting up in the morning and people go like, wait a minute, Michael, Michael, I just woke up. Why am I going to meditate first thing in the morning? You're going to meditate because you're going to, well, most of us use the bathroom first because, you know, it's been hours since we did that. So that's probably a good habit. So then you come back to your your bedroom, or maybe you go to your home office, or you go to your kitchen where nobody else is, and you sit, and you relax, and you meditate on what you want your day to be like. You can slow breathe so that you can calm your mind back down, and while you're still in that state of, I'm almost kind of still asleep, but I'm almost kind of awake, that little twilight area right there, some people say theta, um, you want to just relax your mind and let yourself think about What would your perfect day look like? What could you do to make yourself better and make that a habit? Make it a habit so that you can now set your day. Forget the email that came from the boss or the things that are going on on Facebook. Let you create you. 
If you've got a dream of being able to move to a foreign country, wake up in the morning and the first thing that you do is you meditate on that dream. And I'm not even going to talk about formal meditations or different types of meditations. Right now, let's just sit and relax and think about how am I going to get out of my current situation and into my new situation? What did I do yesterday? Did that move me forward? Did it hold me down or did it push me backwards? And then go like, I need to release those things that actually helped that held me in place so I can move forward to my dream. And don't let those things seem impossible to you. The impossible dream of, oh, I have to stay in this location because I have responsibilities here or I don't have enough money or I don't um, have enough strength to do it because my programming says this is what I'm supposed to do. If you need help, find someone to help you. Let that be part of your meditation. Let that be part of what it takes for you to get out of your current vibe, out of your current mediocre situation and into a higher, better situation. Let your mind create your reality because your mind, regardless of what you think, literally creates your reality. So you need to change your mind. Now, I'm not a meditation expert. I do meditate. I'm not going to try and tell you how to do it. But I will tell you that the things that you think about on a daily basis create your reality. If you change those things, your reality will change. So that's all I have to say for now. Take the habits that you have that are not serving you well. Let's see if we can't remove them. Every morning when you get up, meditate just for If you have no more than two minutes, for two minutes, think about where you want to go, where you want to be, how you're going to get there. And then when you open your eyes and you start your day, put those things into action. Do something to move your life forward in the direction that you want to go. That's it for now. Habits make us. Habits break us. Habits do everything that we are in this life. If you let your habits control you, they might be a good thing. Sometimes if you let your habits control you, they can be a bad thing. Think about your habits. Learn some meditation so that each day, each morning when you get up, you can control what habits influence your life. As Michael Jackson, peace. Peace.